science has proven that we cannot multitask. It, we, we, are, we are not built for it. We are, we are built for more focus and what I, a word I used before reflection than we use ever. And this little divine piece does not allow for a lot of devotion, <laughs> for a lot of reflection. The Nielsen ratings have us consistently in the top 10 in New York AM radio. That is a very big deal. Coming in in the top 10 in New York AM radio is a big deal. And it's because you have come to expect great business content week in and week out. Great superstars. And tonight is no different. Gene Stafford. Now, a little bit of background about Gene Stafford. She's a leadership advisor, collaboration specialist, and a keynote speaker. It happens to be that in the rotation at NSA, the National Speaker Association, she is the president of the New York chapter. Gene, that the New York chapter is is what region beyond? It's not just the five boroughs, right? The uh, as far as mm-hmm. NSA. Yeah, well, we are we serve the the tri-state area, and we have a lot of members now from other states because we have a ton of virtual programming in addition to in person. Amazing. Um, she helps boards, CEOs, executive teams get big things done. She's a leadership advisor and collaboration specialist, having created the leadership concept called the Devotion Factor: Reinventing Discourse in a Divided World. Wow. And yeah, there's good reason why she's sought after because unfortunately, um, it's a bit of a divided world and we need we need more people like Gene actually who understand how to get through the I don't know if we call it nonsense, but sometimes I'm sure it's nonsense, but get through challenges that especially as it relates to business, and we just have to get them solved. So on tonight's show we will discuss the devotion factor how it can increase focus and productivity in any business, collaboration as a result of great conversations, and growing in chaos. With that intro, a very warm welcome, Gene M. Stafford. Thank you for joining me here on Mind Your Business once again. Absolutely. My pleasure to be here, Yitzhak. Gene, tell, it's the last time you were on the show was quite a while ago. Perhaps you could spend a minute or two just talking about your background, please. Mm-hmm. Well, I started in politics in the political space where I worked on campaigns of presidents, governors, and in the mayor's office of New York City for seven of those 20 years in politics, working Mm. on economic development initiatives for the city and state. And uh, I was really in the throes of getting the big things done that we refer to when with very different groups of people who did not agree with each other and who miraculously created a lot of solutions together. We created progress on a regular basis and it wasn't pretty or beautiful. It was quite chaotic, Uh, yet we did it in finite amounts of time. So I use that knowledge now in the work that I do uh, as a business owner uh, and leading uh, an association, as you mentioned, the National Speakers Association, as a leadership advisor with the clients that I work with one-on-one, and as a collaboration specialist when I run workshops and retreats and speak uh, to large audiences. I have the chance to talk about these theories and how we can imbue the same mindset people did the people I watch work in that environment uh, and weave it into the work we're doing now today. Now, without, I'm obviously not going to ask you anything confidential, who your clients are or what type, but to get a general sense of the type of work you do, what type of problems do you like? Have no problem diving right into and solving. Well, when the people who are on a particular nonprofit board or corporate board or or the teams that were that are working are their their projects are delayed, things aren't getting done, uh, people disagree, uh, groups have cordoned off and separated and not come together. Uh, I train people to use language to weave ideas and theories together around what everybody is for around the common goal. And so those people come to me from, you know, all all different places from Columbia University to Thomson Reuters, Standard and Poor's, Invesco, just to name a few. Those are just a few of the firms that I've helped uh, in that in that way. Now, what do we need to learn 
from collaboration. Collaboration is like one of those magic words. We all, in principle, when, when you're around the table, and even when people are disagreeing, you say, okay, you know, we all need to collaborate. In principle, you'll usually get a, everyone nodding their head. But making it happen is another story. <laughs> how, mm-hmm. Gene, how do you make it happen? <laughs> well, you make it happen by realizing we're not here to understand each other at first. We're here to understand ourselves and we're here to understand what are what goals we have in common with the people we're working with. The joy we get getting to understand people and know people along the ride to achieving success together is greater than any definition you could get at Hello. What we learn by working together on a common goal is is invaluable. And that's what true collaboration is, trusting that that end game is the best thing to focus on together. Now, during the course of the interview, I certainly want to start to like kind of dig down at that because what you're describing again i would imagine any level person any sane person would not and agree of course gene's right but like making it happen is the magic now of course that's what you do but perhaps on tonight's show you'll be able to uh you know, get into that just another question before we go to a commercial break over the past two years when unfortunately during the uh, pandemic how has collaboration been affected by that, N- not having the ability of having people in the room looking across the table, staring each other in the eye? How has that been affected? Mm-hmm. Well, the greatest gift to collaboration that happened two years ago was that it happened to every single person on the planet at the exact same time. Pretty much right. most of us were hit at the same time in the same period of time for as its intensity rolled out for the same period of months. Uh, So we were all together struggling. We were all together hurting. We were all together confused. We were all together experiencing miscommunication. So we had to find ways to collaborate because what people all wanted to do was to get their lives moving forward in one way, shape or form at home, and at work. So to be honest, I thought the last two years were the greatest gift for our, our, our for humanity to understand the true ingredients of collaboration. And that's that we all wanted the same things. That's a great point. When, when it's like, I'll, I'll never forget the night of 9-11. Uh, mm-hmm. all, all New Yorkers were, were different. We were changed. And everyone was so caring and sensitive and polite uh, because it hit us all at the same time. Mm-hmm. If, if, if when, when, when I, I guess a big challenge to, to, uh, to collaboration would have been if, 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 if different people were have, if, let's say a certain segment was uh, by Zoom, a certain segment was in person or a certain segment, but when things uh, kind of suddenly set in, and everyone's in the same boat. That mm-hmm. that that the 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 change is not that difficult to implement because everyone's experiencing the same thing. It's a very insightful mm-hmm. point. Very insightful point. Our guest this evening is Jean M. Stafford, leadership advisor, collaboration spe- specialist, and keynote speaker. And we had her, we have her on because. Um, again, I met Jean back at a C-suite event. Thank you, Jeffrey Hazlett. This goes back probably around six, seven years ago. And collaboration specialists, there aren't many in that area. And it's intriguing, and it's something that's uh, so necessary and vital in pretty much in any corporation, in any business. Uh, maybe if it's a business of one, I mean, there's only so much arguing you could do with yourself, so okay. <laughs> but as a business grows, if there's two people, partners, executive teams, that's when you need someone like Gene. And uh, Gene Stafford, again, thank you so much for joining me here again on Mind Your Business. I'm going to jump in with a bit of a challenging question, but uh, you kind of, you indicated that I can ask you anything, right? So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Is it really possible for one person to change another person. <laughs> Am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> it's the number one thing everybody wants to do. Let's put it that way. It's, it's top of mind to most people that I meet and work with, right? We are energetically desiring to change another person, to yeah. get someone to do something. 
And I advise clients and audiences all the time that if you'd like to use your energy for that, go for it. It is the worst use of your energy mm-hmm. and talents and your vision and your ability to make things happen. Uh, so the best focus of one's energy is on ourselves and to be, uh, you know, so impactful, to be knowledgeable about what it is we're for in a way that others are moved toward things. Uh, but uh, no, our, our energy is going toward uh, changing another person is, is a terrible use of our resources. So. Such a great take that you're, the way you're explaining it is that like, it's not just give up before you try, is that it's a poor use of your energy. If, 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 if you're going to try to change someone else, you're just going to grind and and mm-hmm. and and drag yourself through 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 a situation that is nearly impossible to pull off and it's just it's just it's just like so rugged and you're not going to win so like what's the point mm-hmm. it's like you're burning your energy so are there so what is your suggestion then when someone does need to work with someone else and there is not a meeting of the minds how mm-hmm. how do you start to get them closer to each other? Mm. Well, always to reframe every conversation to what you're going to accomplish, when you're going to accomplish it, in what time frame you're going to get it done, who is it going to be done with, and to repeat that over and over and over and over and over again. You know, I, I know that clients, when I start working with them, feel it's very disingenuous to repeat something to repeat a platform, to repeat a mantra, to repeat goals over and over and again. But it really helps to center people, opinions and agendas, desires, wants, you know, the the outside crowd. If you're leading something, it is the absolute best way to um, keep people on course. And so it helps with people who disagree, you know? And it's amazing to hear it from someone like yourself. At the end of the day, all real communication specialists know that secret. Repeat it again yeah. and again and again and again and again. And mm-hmm. for those that aren't in communication, they don't understand. Like, I, I thought I heard that already. Like, and, and in fact, um, Chet Holmes has a great quote about that. He says, don't focus on if you heard it already. Focus on are you implementing it? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, rather than just try to prove your, 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 your sense of memory, Prove your sense of, of execution. Are, are you actually yeah. going ahead with what you learned on that point as opposed to just like, okay, I heard it already, so I'm putting it out of my mind. No, are you doing it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And messages need to be repeated to be understood. They need to be repeated to be understood. They need for the people who are sitting list, every single person you meet with every single day has arrived into that space with a whole lot of things that went wrong and a few things that went right. So their mind is scattered and they need to be refocused on their in their time and energy. Again, I keep going back to energy because it really does help us understand that that's one of our resources. It either makes it helps us to shine and receive things in a space or or gives us an opportunity to block anything coming our way. In 2022, what's your take on what makes a leader impactful? Mm. Well, there's a lot of great leaders out there right now uh, who have risen to the occasion and are will be the stars of the future. And star is the acronym I would use uh, for for those leaders. They are uh, a star stands for their their setting parameters for every meeting they hold, every every communication they have, literally the beginning, middle, and end, the expectations, and they're facilitating a conversation to that end. Uh, they're taking time with the client, with the, with the employees who are servicing the clients to find out where their strengths are being highlighted and how they can help them more. Because this this distance that was created over the years that you know I'm just going to drop you here and let you go. It's not about micromanaging. It's about saying to an employee, uh, "What can I do to help you? What is it you need that I don't know you need?" And then A stands for advocate 
advocate for that person for their professional development going forward. There's a lot of things people working for us don't know about their next step forward. And the greatest leaders in 2022 are realizing that the, the exhaustive process of turnover is not worth it. And the extra thoughtful steps we can all take to advocate for employees who are who are worth it is is a, is a much better use of our time. And R stands to for uh, stands for reflect on that process, mm. take it in, see where it works. The best leaders of 2022 are reflecting on what works. There's a lot of noise out there about what doesn't work. The most powerful people out there right now are reflecting on what does work. And they're taking the time to develop that in themselves to become stronger and ready for the next great things coming their way. So my acronym is STAR. Amazing. Amazing. If there's time later in the show, I'm going to ask to actually go through that again. That was, that was, that was fantastic. Um, before we go to a commercial break, Gene, how could people find out more about your your work, NSA, your collaboration work, um, you, know, you name it. How can people find out more information? Oh, great. I asked them to uh, reach out to me directly on LinkedIn, where I'm found at Gene M. Stafford, and on Instagram, where I'm found at Gene underscore Stafford. I post articles and ideas and meetings that I hold that people can join, So, and I, and I love direct communication in those places. Mind your business with Yitzhak Saftos right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. And thank you to all the, for all those that are tuned in around the world on the powerful iHeartRadio network. Well, my guest this evening, Gene M. Stafford, leadership advisor, collaboration specialist, and also no small feat, she is the chapter head of the NSA New York chapter. That's the National Speakers Association. We've had many stars from the uh, that are that are NS. We've had actually many NSA Hall of Famers. We had uh, Shep Hyken, um, Jeffrey Hazlett, uh, Stephen Shapiro, um, and then we've had many who are in the what are they called the Million Dollar Club? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we've had a Ron Ron Carr who was a, a chapter head, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, many, many other great NSA specialists. And of course, the NSA is an amazing organization for those that want to pursue. A speaking career. In fact, maybe we could just talk for a minute about the NSA. Mm -hmm, absolutely. What's happened now in 2022 in the New York City chapter is that we're attracting a lot of people who've become speakers in their business. A lot of people have moved into a speaking platform screen uh, situation over the past two years. So we have people who aren't necessarily professional speakers who are members of our chapters, who are corporate individuals who have found themselves speaking more, who want to perfect their craft, show up a little bit more powerfully as facilitators. And uh, they're showing up and becoming members of our chapter because it's serving their purpose to uh, further develop their craft. How could people find out more information about joining NSA? Uh, the website is nsanyc.org. There is a um, drop down for membership. They can click right on and go on in. They can actually come to their first meeting as our guest. And all that information is on nsanyc.org. Amazing. So, Gene, um, before the break, we were talking about how leaders can be more impactful in 2022. So, I, I guess a, um, an offshoot of that question, if you will, is what are the best leaders doing to? To, to advance their vision, change the world, again, in, in whichever areas of, of life or in their career that they are uh, looking to affect society, to, to move forward change, what are, what, what, what are they doing? What's their secret sauce, if you will? Mm -hmm. They're learning that reinventing themselves isn't done on a special occasion. <laughs> They're learning that reinventing themselves is woven into the thread of their ascension in life, in work, in the way they serve people. And reinvention happens routinely. Breaking systems, starting things over, killing initiatives, breathing life to things that give them passion, that feed their passion, that help them to feel like they're serving the world at, at a greater capacity with, with all of their capacity. They're also checking their capacity for 
for conflict and their ability to work through it. So reinvention is a broad um, scale concept that I work very, very, very deeply on with my clients now. Um, there are actually, you know, I've actually been certified in, in reinvention this these past two years because I knew that I had to come up with a, to add to my tools to help my clients. And these systems are fascinating. Uh, and it basically proves the theory that we cannot make reinvention a special occasion. We have to have the mindset of it every single day. And that's what top leaders are doing now. Now, Jean, you also used a, uh, another word that's a, uh, an exciting word, and that is the word capacity. To, mm. to take stock of one's capacity, is there any type of trick that, that would enable a leader to really self-evaluate their capacity in certain areas? Or is that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Big time. I have had a number of CEOs, general counsels for major corporations complain to me about the same thing over and over again. And that's that they have one too many urgent requests for their time throughout the day. And what can they do that they're not spending 80% of their time putting out fires and answering problems and miscommunication? And that really is on the individual leader to figure out who they're going to enlist to, to take that journey with them, to reinvent their time, and to refocus their capacity for growth. Every single one of us is underutilizing our capacity for uh, sharing our vision. We're all getting sucked into conflict. We're getting sucked into inefficiency. And so what I mean when I use the word capacity is that it's on us to evaluate our own capacity for growth. It's on us to take a close look at what we want our time to go to and how we want our time to be utilized when we're in that space. So it's all on us. And that's what uh, I, capacity is a very exciting word for me. Yeah. <laughs> I like you. I'm, I'm very moved by it. Right. Thank you. Now I want to get to this question. We touched on it at the beginning of the show. What is the devotion factor? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the devotion factor is the platform on which I am training individuals now and uh, running retreats. And it's basically that rather than simply living, we're living for something. We are living in the world in the name of a principle, an idea, or a person. It's being in the world and, and being of use and making this a mainframe for your existence. Mm. Wow. So to take that to the next level, yeah. it's what we haven't been doing for a long time. We haven't been focusing on what we're for. And we haven't, it, it's not enough to say, this is what I'm for. What I'm for needs to be serviced throughout your day. And it's beyond self-help. It is self-discovery. And again, that word we talked about earlier, capacity. Yeah. There's so much to learn about the body and the mind and the heart we've been given that we don't take enough time to learn about. And when you do routinely structure that into your day to build what you're for, into the communication you have everywhere you go. And that's when you're quiet. That includes when you're quiet. What is going on between here and here is, is, is integral to your, your impact on this planet. And the only person who can improve that is you. Hmm. So that's what the motion factor is about. It's giving people a platform, a training, a focus to realize this can be done, and here are the simple steps to get it done. Wow, wow! How, how did you uh, how did you come to the the awareness to build such a uh, a framework? I, if you mind, mm. I hope you don't mind me asking, because it's fascinating. Yeah, well, that that's a great question. In in full disclosure, I took my own advice, and this past year, <laughs> I hired two really high powered people <laughs> to work with. Uh, on my messaging, on where I am and what 
I am for in this world. And I believe that devotion doesn't need, uh, I believe in secularizing devotion. I believe that we can all learn from a word that, that, that is, that's in another column for us. We can all learn from the word devotion, what it is could unite all of us and make our lives easier. And again, make us more efficient. And uh, I know from the own, from my own personal devotion practices, which include even, you know, waking up every day at quarter of five and, and beginning with a journaling and an, an intentional writing of meditation and prayer, ending my day the same way. When I walk, I walk without technology and I walk in the name of someone who can't walk. Mm. I do those things so that when I routinely return to the work that I'm doing and the people that I'm serving, I'm calmer. I'm more focused. And I know that the clients that I'm working with now on these initiatives are experiencing the same light and effortlessness. So it works. Wow. Our guest this evening is Jean M. Stafford, leadership advisor, collaboration specialist, and of course, a keynote speaker as well. She is now the chapter head at NSA. We say Mazel Tov on that. <laughs> when what, what is your uh, what, what what is your term? When were you elected in, and how long is the term for? I was elected in uh, June 2021, and uh, my term ends as president June 2022, and then I begin my past presidency. Uh, as you know, we have a nice leadership track there where we all support each other all the way through. Yeah. So it's been a, quite an interesting year. Uh, we were we were back in person for the first time at uh, in June 2021. So it was really a monumental uh, accomplishment, and we kept ourselves in person throughout this entire term. So it's it's definitely been a feat, and uh, we've definitely been thanked for it. So people yeah. need to be together. Humans yeah. need humans. Yeah. Um, here's a question. I hope I'm not going to put you on the spot, but, uh, you touched on it before. Like when you go walking, you go technology free. Let's talk about that, that a word that may seem as a magic word, but has a, se a severe downside. Multitasking, right? Multitasking is great. Yeah. You can do multi multiple things at once. What does it do to someone's productivity when they're just mm -hmm. multitasking? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, science has proven that we cannot multitask. It, we, we, are, we are not built for it. We are, we are built for more focus and what I, a word I used before, reflection, than we use ever. And this little divine piece does not allow for a lot of devotion, <laughs> for a lot of reflection. Uh, because, so for example, right now, it's on airplane mode. Right. And my computer has zero notifications on it. And my phone, when it goes back on, only has text notifications when I feel like it. And then they're off. And all my clients are advised to do the exact same thing. And when my clients do it, their level of efficiency quadruples. And it's, it's, it's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, you know, some of the most intense... CEOs in the world and then some of the most intense, uh, I'll just give you an example. I, I work with a lot of financial advisors and they have, you know, dings and pings and, and updates and, and charts and things coming through their, their phones and their computers constantly. And um, to be present for a client is essential to their growth and to being paying attention to numbers is, is very, very important. So I know firsthand that those, those clients in particular have learned that when they're on with a client or when they're looking at numbers that have to do with a particular client, they turn everything off and they take a moment. And then again, I work this word reflection back in because this is taking away from our ability to reflect, be quiet, sit still and take a few breaths. I was the keynote speaker last month for Invesco. And I coached, I've coached a few clients since that event from that event. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people have told me in that call, they never thought of breathing as something they could do to reset their minds, to get themselves focused again mm -hmm. and to, and to combat this idea of, of multitasking that to catch themselves, take a moment, take a breath and be present 
for what they are in front of. Wow. I, here's an interesting question. What are some of the, I guess, telltale signs that mm-hmm. what, that you uh, that you could spot in an executive, in a uh, an entrepreneur, someone leading a company, that they're stuck and they really do need guidance. Mm. They're not speaking for themselves anymore, mm-hmm. and they're not speaking up when they have something to say. We have certainly learned over the past two years that there are a lot of people out there who feel they can't say what they want to say. So if you're worried about what you have to say, figure out a way to say it and reframe it in a way that talks about what you're for, going back to the devotion factor. And those are a lot of people coming my way right now, the kinds of people who know it is not healthy for them to not be able to say what they they want to say. Uh, And there's also a way to reframe what they want to say in a way that will be more collaborative, that will show they're a team player, that will show they are, they are uh, exercising a great deal of positivity about the world, that they really want to strategically lead a team in the right direction. What are some of the words they can use? What are some of what some of the compassion they could imbue in conversation and just opening up to a deeper awareness in that so. Now, one of the uh, one of your areas of specialty is navigating chaos. Um, mm-hmm. I- if I may, what are some of the tricks? What are some of the secrets that you have in navigating navigating chaos? It's, I don't know how else to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, word I talked about earlier was how important it is for every leader to be able to reinvent themselves on a regular basis. And the idea being that we have just learned the past two years, chaos isn't going anywhere. It's here to stay. There's no such thing as going back to the way we were. I won't even use the the word normal. You know, it's just, we are here to live with disruption and chaos. And what I learned in 20 years in politics is that chaos is the presence of multiple orders. Hmm. And when you are are aware of your own strengths and what I call your devotion factor, when you're aware of what that is, you can function, find the multiple orders and move people forward with them and get things done, cross finish lines and be the visionary that the people who are working for you and with you need. So I just want to hold on to that for a second. You seem to imply, I mean, you explained it in an amazing way and like, yeah, she's right. But like, it sounds easier said than done. Can someone Mm -hmm. and can a team, can a company actually grow through chaos? Absolutely. No question about it. They have already. And those who know how to grow through chaos are still here. Those who don't know how to grow through chaos are not here. It would, it would be highly uh, unintelligent, <laughs> that was the right word to use, okay. to think that you want to, to, to design a company that can move forward when things are good. It's impossible to think that way and be productive now. We have to learn how to be uncomfortable and mm-hmm. still move forward. We have to learn how to function within time frames and things going wrong to get things done. This happens with nonprofit boards. It happens with corporate teams. There are a lot of opinions out there and agendas. People need to be directed toward what the common goals are when people are directed toward what the common goals are. Collaboration is inevitable. Well, collaboration is inevitable to get to that point. Hmm. So chaos is a uh, is a good thing. Yeah, it is. It is. We got to become friendly with it. Wow. Um, fascinating. Fascinating. And 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 you know, the more one thinks about it, the more it's like you know, she's uh, Jean's making a lot of sense here. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Because you know, on the surface, it's like, oh, chaos is terrible. It's how could you get anything done? But it's kind of it's it's like a. Um, 
maybe maybe a, a good metaphor would be to someone who uh, who wants who's lifting weights because he wants to get stronger. If he's if they're not lifting the weights, they're not going to get stronger. It's because of that kind of that tension that they're creating that they're building yes, up their muscles. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And learning that the tension is good. It's informative. It's giving you information you need to make you better at the next turn because the greatest leaders in the world are improving at every single, you know, turn and, and twist. And if you're improving, you, you've suffered yeah. and you've learned from the suffering. And again, back to that word reflection, you've reflected on what you've learned from it, what you need from it, and how you're going to go forward with it. And you've taken the time to take that in and increase your capacity for growth. Amazing. I, a, a couple more questions, if I may, Jean, before we wrap up. Um, coming back to multitasking and distractions, what's your take on social media? Now, social media is here to stay. We know we have LinkedIn accounts and Instagram accounts. But what's your take mm. on that? Mm. Time yourself in the scroll. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's all it is. You, you go there to get something or you go there to check something and then you begin a scroll right? That, that's one thing. We can be very intentional about which social media platforms we use on a regular basis. Um, look, I have, I, I have people I work with who only have a Facebook account to look at wedding pictures from a family, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're very high up and they, they own what they run and they have people who do this kind of thing, right? So there's, there's very different levels of individuals interacting with social media right now. And, um, and, and different levels of people are, are, are getting different things out of it, right? So, but as a general rule, um, some people have to use social media because right. that's what they do, right? right. They're a social media uh, person and they, right. they work in that space. They work in advertising, they work in marketing, they have to measure things that go back and forth. Um, so again, this, what, what I go back to is anything, any tool, we use anywhere is useful when we spend time on what we're for, when we nurture our own personal and professional development. And then you have more control over the kinds of knee-jerk reactions you might have in these social media spaces. So I would put out to people that they think about social media as any space they enter. You go to an event, you walk in, you use it a certain way, and then you leave. You, you use it with intention. So use social media with the same intention you use a networking event or a business meeting. Figure out what you're going to be there for and get yourself out and on to the next thing. It's a great take. Great take. It's, it's okay to use it as long as you're aware of the parameters going in and stick to it. And, and don't yeah. get don't don't let it just drag you along. I mean, that's normally what happens. Someone uh, will will go for some uh, information on Instagram per se. Uh, I'm just giving that as an example. But then they'll get drawn in because of the pictures and the videos, and then they just suddenly they find themselves an hour, two hours later, just in, in another planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, design your feed. Know what you're looking at. Enjoy what you're looking at. When, what you're looking at needs to be positive, needs to be, uh, you know, uh, messages of that are aligned with what you're for, that are aligned with what you want to be in the name of, that are aligned with the, the way you want to see your life. Uh, if you're, you know, we, we went through a couple of years of, of people going on social media to get angry. And I don't, I didn't meet one person who said that really worked well for them. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's very important to make sure that what you read when you get there is productive. Gene, what is the future of learning and development? Mm, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. And that's what's happening a lot in my space as a speaker that, you know, we used to get hired for single workshops. We used to get hired for an individual keynote. And now a lot of us are being asked to stay on board for a couple of months and 
really weave our work into the thread of learning and development and to create structures and timelines and systems for our company, for the companies, for our clients that we're working for, so that these individuals who now need to operate in chaos and now need to understand how to reinvent themselves, that they get those tools they need to become that proficient. And that is where the future of learning and development is going right now. Jean, before uh, we're approaching the close, but before we let you go, could you please go back to something you shared halfway through the show? Incredible. The acronym STAR. What mm. and your definition mm. of that and how leaders could could change the world through that through that prism? Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. So the greatest leaders in 2022 are operating through this acronym STAR, which is that they're structuring meetings with great clarity and they're facilitating goals. You know, they're, they're communicating that and with great structure. They are taking the time, T, taking the time to spend with their employees and invest in them, highlight what's great about them and, and really nurture and train them through, you know, it's bigger than mentoring. It's really seeing it through. And then A, they're advocating for that individual because I'm finding a lot of the CEOs I work with when they do take the time to run this exercise, come back to me and say, I didn't realize this employee had no idea what was available to them. I didn't realize this employee didn't understand their, their opportunity for development. And then to uh, to advocate for that individual going forward, you know, that, that they can help them cross the finish line. And then R, to reflect on the process. And reflection is something that I hope we align with that other word I was telling you about, invention, that reflection and reinvention become a part of the way the leaders of 2022 change the world going forward. Jean, how can people find out more information about your uh, the, the weekly clubhouse and the, uh, the NSA events that are coming up? How can people find out more information? Sure, absolutely. They can find me on LinkedIn, uh, where I post about, you know, our NSA events that are coming up. And NSA, for everybody who needs to know, stands for National Speakers Association. And I'm very proud to be president of the New York City chapter, where we host consultants, we host corporate individuals who find themselves speaking more than not. So we'd love to have people at that meeting. I am a host of a room on Clubhouse called Reinventing Conversations every Friday at 8 a.m. And people can find me there they can find the room there uh, and they can also find recordings from past rooms so they can listen to what uh, amazing conversations we've had so far and we also talk about the devotion factor on the third friday of every month and uh, they can connect with me directly on linkedin and on instagram where i just love to hear from anybody who's uh, moved here today jean Thank you so much for joining me here. Gene M. Stafford, Leadership Advisor, Collaboration Speci Specialist, and NSA Chapter President of New York Region. That's a uh, pretty big feat and, of course, a keynote speaker. Well, this wraps up a great edition of Mind Your Business. Tune in again next Sunday night for another great edition of Mind Your Business right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, and the IR Radio Network. Have a successful week. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.